ever-flowing liquid fire of life, ever-expanding and illuminating truth, which is always revealed with wisdom, a spiritual nutrient necessary for vitality that is maintained through selflessness, a filter of ether that aids purity, which is love. Love, a limitless paper lantern floating into infinity on the intentions and actions of initiates of the mysteries. Welcome fellow phoenixes to the Spiritual Phoenix Podcast, where we make a daily offering to the divine by putting our past on the pyre, searching the smoke for spirituality, turning the ashes into art, adapting isolation into connection, and manifesting mental wellness. I'm your host, Ross Cessna, and together we are the Spiritual Phoenix. The intent of this show isn't to tell you what to think, but to get you to think, and originally articulate yourself in a way that is uplifting. We are the artists of our lives, and today is a blank canvas. Let's collectively create a better tomorrow. And uh, I'd like to take a moment and focus on what we're grateful for today. Today, I'm just, um, I have a lot of things to be grateful about. I'm grateful that I was able to take some time off recording. I haven't really recorded in the past month. I'm grateful that uh, a friend that I've met prior to doing this, who had been on the show, Nixie Marie, um, was able to reach out and get some potential guests for me to uh, have on. Um, they're mainly men, I haven't, or they're all men really, that she's connected me with. I haven't had a lot of guys on this podcast, so I'd like to uh, offer some other men's perspective beyond my own. Um, and I'm just grateful for where I'm at in life, even though the, uh, past couple weeks have been somewhat stressful for me and it's not that the the weeks have been stressful I've just been stressed out because of um, my perception and not doing some things that I need to be doing but with that I'd like to get into a couple quotes for the day Um, one day I found out that my personal history was no longer necessary for me and like drinking I dropped it little by little you must create a fog around yourself You must erase everything around you until nothing can be taken for granted, until nothing is any longer for sure or real. Your problem now is that you're too real. Your endeavors are too real. Your moods are too real. Don't take things for granted. You must begin to erase yourself. That was said by Carlos Castaneda. To be a warrior is not a simple matter of wishing to be one. It is rather an endless struggle that you will go on to the that will go on to the very last moment of our lives nobody is born a warrior in exactly the same way that nobody is born an average man we make ourselves into one or the other and again that was said by carlos castaneda so today's episode is uh the four enemies which is a concept that carlos castaneda um puts into the book um, Don Juan, The Secret Teachings of Don Juan, a, a Yaki Way of Knowledge. I think that name is right. I actually have the book right here with me somewhere. Uh, it's, you can figure out what the book is. Um, so, the, the four enemies. Oh, I'd like, also like to state that when he says man of knowledge, he's not specifically re- referring to men only. Um, and also, I realize that some people aren't a big fan of Carlos Castaneda. They think that he's a a charlatan and that the books were all fictional and none of it was true and this or that. Um, So they they kind of devalue all of his stuff. I don't believe that everything in there is 100% true. I think it's kind of like that gonzo journalism type stuff. And truth truthful or not truthful like about the physical story elements you can still learn a lot of stuff from fiction it might be hard for some people to decipher and discern what's valuable and what isn't in those situations but it is possible and i read this book before when i was um still participating in my addiction And I got a lot of knowledge from it. And I had talked to Dalian about um, reading it. I think it's like episode 88 where I I told him I was going to read this book again. And uh, 
definitely I got a lot more out of it this time than I, I did the other time and different things stood out to me. So I like to get into the four enemies. The four enemies on the, for the, a man of knowledge or a warrior, which to Carlos Castaneda, those are the same things from what he was taught by Don Juan, um, which could be a composite character, but regardless. The four enemies are fear, clarity, power, and old age. And uh, I'm going to read this quote from the book, and then I'll kind of get into my concept of what this means. The constant renewal of the quest of becoming a man of knowledge was expressed in the theme of the four symbolic enemies encountered on the path of learning. Fear, clarity, power, and old age. Renewing the quest implied the gaining and maintenance of control over oneself. A true man of knowledge was expected to battle each of the four enemies in succession until the last moment of his life in order to keep himself actively engaged in becoming a man of knowledge. Yet, despite the truthful renewal of the quest, the odds were inevitably against man. He would succumb to his last symbolic enemy. This was the idea of impermanency. So, when we start searching for knowledge, we, we definitely do have to overcome fear. Fear is the mind killer. I forget who, who's quoted as saying that. But for me, even on my own journey of finding out about myself, I, I had to face a lot of different fears along the way. So I had to face the fears of expressing my truths and getting over what other people would think about me, being comfortable being me. I had to get over the fear of looking at myself honestly. I still have different fears that I face now. The difference between Prior to starting my recovery um, in September of last year and now, I've built up a repertoire of successes in overcoming my fear. Um, and it's not that I don't have fear, it's that I continue to move on regardless of it. And granted, sometimes I still do get stuck momentarily, or for a little bit, um, but I can't hold myself in that vibration because it limits my ability to be successful. The next enemy would be clarity. I'm pretty sure I've talked about on here before how damaging clarity can be. If not, it was in an article on my website. Um, but the reason clarity is damaging in lots of ways because once you think you see things clearly, you kind of get into this box and nothing else can fit into it. Like you think you know everything. And if you know everything, you're not teachable. Now, complete distortion is just as bad as total clarity. So you almost kind of need like an opaque, opaque perspective where you can make out shapes and forms, but they're still kind of blurry. So it's distorted, but not distorted to the point of not knowing anything um, and that's kind of one of the ones that I'm facing right now is the clarity thing um, I'll get through it I, I've been really moving more towards the opaque perspective of it as of late and realizing how little I know sometimes in moments I still get wrapped up in it the next one is power um, there's that old saying, and I might butcher it, power corrupts, ultimate power ultimately corrupts. Now, I've always kind of wanted to have uh, power growing up, or to be powerful in lots of ways, because I felt so powerless. In recovery, I've admitted that I'm powerless, but it doesn't mean that if I start getting recognition or um, anything like that that it won't go to my head. If you look at a lot of people who are in, in the public eye, who have a lot of money which culturally we equate to power, it can be um, very destructive for those people. And, and the way that 
Carlos Castaneda is presenting it, though, is more in a term of um, metaphysical power. I mean, it applies to the other power as well. But he's, in, in my opinion, kind of representing more spiritual power. And that can be very... Let, let's put it this way. If you could manifest what you wanted, and you always got the things that you wanted, but you didn't necessarily look at all the causes for how you got things, and you never really saw the destruction that was associated with it, would you really want that power? Um, and the other thing is, people with power tend to trample on other people. Um, there's this concept in magic or mystical communities that sometimes you may get what you want through using magic or different things like that, but it might not come about the way that you want it. So say that you're wanting money, um, or this is just an example, but say you're wanting money, you, you might get that money, but it might come from the death of a loved one and getting money in the will. So be very careful if you start to get some kind of power, the ability to harness certain things to avoid it. Manly, Manly P. Hall had this um, lecture where it's secret powers and why you shouldn't use them, basically. So I, I try to be very cautious of what things that I participate in um, because... I don't want to deal with the repercussions of those things. And the last enemy is old age. Now, I think this one's kind of clear in some ways, like old age limits your ability, um, all, all this stuff. And the way that it's kind of presented in the book is that old age is an enemy because it makes you kind of stop and slow down. If you look at tribal cultures, there's people that are probably in their 80s or 90s that are more active and more physically active than people in their 20s or 30s like myself um, before recovery my grandfather uh, he, he still goes to the gym actually he's 89 years old but he exercised more than me when I was like a third of, of no two-thirds of his age um, no, a third of his age, sorry, I haven't had enough coffee yet. But, and the other thing is, a lot of older people, they kind of get bitter in the physicality of things as well. The one that I'm most concerned about now, um, of the four enemies, is going to be power. Like, what if this gets recognition? But the other thing, too, is if power is an enemy, the fear of being powerless would be an enemy, too. So part of me is also afraid of not being able to reach another level with this in some ways. Um, in a very Taoist sense of the way, I need to be okay with being where I'm at, which I can do, and thinking about that now is, has reposition me to that place um, so here's some other um, requirements that Carlos Castaneda lays out for being a man of knowledge after you've kind of faced the four enemies one to become a man of knowledge was a matter of learning so stay active in learning stuff Two, a man of knowledge had unbending intent so for me my intent is to express the different things that I've been through and hopefully help some people. So I can't compromise that. Like this morning, I wasn't going to record this episode because I'm a little tired because I haven't been sleeping well. And I made myself do it regardless. Um, granted, unbending intent, there's a lot of other times when it's more applicable than that. That's the best example I have. Three, a man of knowledge had clarity of mind. So he said that Clarity was one of the four enemies, but you also have to possess it. So, 
you have to be able to have kind of a clear mind, but not so clear that you think you know everything because you can't know everything. For to become a man of knowledge was a matter of strenuous labor. The things that I've been going through in, in my personal life to get to the point where I'm at have been a lot of exerted effort. I go to a lot of meetings. I am very introspective. I do a lot of different physical things. I stay very active. I'm busier now um, than I've ever been. But this is the type of busy that I have to maintain to keep on my path. A man of knowledge was a warrior. And he doesn't specifically mean that you're going to be fighting other people. You're kind of a warrior against your lower self. You're a warrior against giving up. You're a warrior against your character defects. And that's something else that I'm working on. To become a man of knowledge was an unceasing process. One of the things about recovery is... I will always be recovering from addiction issues. I will always be recovering from mental health issues. There's never going to be a position where I'm just okay. And that might not work for some people and that's fine. This is just me and this is what Carlos Castaneda is presenting for his How to Be a Man of Knowledge. And the reason that it's an unceasing process is because there's always more to learn, there's always more to do, there's always more growth. There's always some kind of backwards momentum or some kind of new character defect that will spring up. That's life. So you have to be going forward. Um, the last one is a man of knowledge had an ally. Now, in his book, an ally was related to um, specific substances. I really feel in some ways that I, I have acquired an ally and one of the things that he says al about allies is allies have a rule and ironically I feel like my allies rule is pretty much that I can't use them anymore it's, it's kind of counterintuitive in some ways and it doesn't have to make sense to anybody um, this is the last couple quotes I'll read and then I'm going to let everybody go. I think I've rambled on long enough. A man of knowledge is one who has followed truthfully the hardships of learning. A man who has, without rushing or without faltering, gone as far as he can in unraveling the secrets of power and knowledge. A man goes to knowledge as he goes to war, wide awake, with fear, with respect, and with absolute assurance. Going to knowledge or going to war in any other manner is a mistake, and who... And whoever makes it will live to regret his steps. Um, yeah, and you can follow me on social media at Spiritual Phoenix. I offer daily tarot readings at Spiritual Phoenix Tarot. I started a, a side podcast of one minute long poetry called the Phoenix Poetry Podcast. Currently it is on iTunes, but I'll be adding it to the other services in the future. You can visit my website, spiritualphoenix.com. I love, respect, and appreciate all of you. Love and light. Namaste. Don't believe. Don't follow. Do not consume. Do not watch. Largely what I'm talking about here is reclaiming experience. This is what's been taken from us. It's a self-advancing, self-expanding, self-defining process. And it takes no prisoners. The real world isn't a spiritual world, it isn't a material world, it isn't an empty world, it isn't a solid world, it's simply...